Hey everyone, Baby Jace here, and today we're going to talk about the Mythic Ursoc Raid Encounter. Mythic Ursoc is extremely similar to Heroic, with only one new Mythic mechanic, and that is every time he does two sets of roars, he's going to summon an ad, and this ad has to die before his next set of roars. And the reason why is because if the ad is alive during the roar, the ad will fear pretty much everyone in melee. And so it's very important that he does die. Now when the ad does die, he will leave behind a pool on the ground, and this pool will also cause you to be feared if you are melee um, standing in the pool when it dies, or ranged, or anyone really. So make sure that you're not standing in it, and make sure he dies, you know, Try not to kill him the last second, because if you kill him the last second when a fear is already being cast, like your melee might, and your tanks might get feared. Now, this fight is going to be positioned a little differently from Heroic. You're going to want all of your melee uh, soakers to be on the left side of the boss, in between the boss and the wall. And you want all of your ranged on the uh, right side of the boss, uh, facing, you know, like the, the center of the room, you know, all the open space. And you want to either have 9 and 9 with your two tanks not soaking, or you want to have 10 and 10 with both tanks soaking. It doesn't really do too much damage to the tank, so I recommend the 10 and 10, but whatever you prefer. If you don't have enough uh, melee to soak on the left side of the boss, you might want to grab a couple healers that are mo mobile. We used a Resto Shaman and a Resto Druid for this. But really, you just it doesn't even matter if they're not mobile, you just need two people. This fight is pretty much all about the Enrage. He's the DPS check of the tier. So his mythic mechanic isn't too difficult. You really just want to cleave the bear down. You don't want to focus fire because you do need most of your damage going on the boss. As for Lust, we chose the Lust at the start of the fight, but you can choose the Lust either at the beginning or at the end. Now, I'm pretty much going to go over the entire kill video now step by step. Um, I'm going to try and do this from now on with all my other videos because it's the easiest way for me to explain what's happening at each part of the fight and you get a better idea on like why we did what we did. So yep, here we go. Here's the kill video for Ursoc and I'm going to do a step by step. Alright, so here we are. We pulled the boss and basically you just, all the melees and whatever people you have assigned in that group, so here we have group 1 and 2, all of us are just on the left of the boss and all the range are kind of behind him or whatever. Now the key for this fight, again, is when he's doing his charge, is you don't want to be in his hitbox if you're melee. If you are in his hitbox, you're going to get hit. And another cool thing about this is he doesn't actually have to charge through the group. As long as the melee group is in his hitbox, you will all get hit. A cool thing with Demon Hunters on this fight is Demon Hunters can put the darkness down and it helps with damage uh, by quite a bit. A lot of people are able to avoid getting hit uh, thanks to the darkness. So here he just did his first set of roar, his first roar of the first set. Here's the second roar. So make, make sure on this difficulty you're not standing in the miasma during a roar. You're going to get feared. And here comes the ad. The ad just came right on in. Tank picks it up. And you pretty much just have to DPS the ad down with the boss. So uh, we're getting some good cleaving here. Whatever class you have that can cleave, so like DKs, we D&D and we just start spamming. Here we go. We got hit by our charge. Tanks got hit too. It, the charge really doesn't do that much damage if all 10 people get hit by it. It's, it's pretty nice. And tanks especially just really do not take a lot of damage. As you can see here, um, I was in the pool as he did his fear, so I got feared. Uh, as he did the roar, so I got feared. And be aware when you kill the ad, the ad does drop a puddle. So you, you want to have that ad dead before the roar goes off. And if you kill the ad like half a second before the roar goes off, you could potentially fear all of your melee and your tanks, and that's really, really bad. After that second roar, the ad's back out again, and the boss is off charging. That was his third charge, so we just did range, melee, range, melee, range, melee, just back and forth, and that's pretty much it. Ad's dead, the puddle's down, we're all getting out before the roar goes off, none of us are getting feared, and that's pretty much how the fight works. Uh, you really just go back and forth like that. Now, you can let their lust on the pull, or you can lust at the end of the fight on the enrage. We prefer to lust on the pull because, uh, if you save the lust for the end of the fight, he's going to get more roars off, and he, when he does finally enrage, he's going to have a lot of stacks. But at the same time, you don't have to deal with him as much as long uh, during that enrage 
if you do less at the end. Both strats are viable. You kind of just have to do whatever your guild is comfortable with. Just make sure the most important thing is that you don't stop killing the bears. The bears are the most important thing to kill. If they get a roar off, it's really, really bad. We actually had a few low percentage wipes because he roared the melee off. And the like eight seconds that were feared were not DPS in the boss. And then he, the boss enraged and just killed everyone. So you really want to make sure that you those things are dying before the next war goes off. Like you don't need to nuke them right off the bat, you just want to cleave them. I know I've said it multiple times, but trust me, you're going to have a wipe because you either nuked them and you didn't have enough damage on boss, or you didn't cleave them properly and they got a roar off, I mean like it happens, you're gonna, it's going to happen. So yeah, boss is enraged, and at this point, when oh no, he actually has not enraged, he's about to enrage. Okay, boss is enraged, and once he's enraged, things are going to start hitting a lot harder. You need to make sure all 20 of your raid members are soaking the fears. Um, if you're not soaking every fear, it's going to get pretty nasty. Uh, it, it hurts, yeah, especially the charges. If you don't have everyone getting hit by charges, you're just straight fucked on this fight. Because it, it hurts. As you can see there, we took almost no damage because we were all in the darkness, and when you're in the darkness... You really don't take any damage. It's uh, it's a really nice uh, thing that Demon Hunters bring. So if you have a Demon Hunter, you know, it's really nice to make sure you save your darkness for that uh, part of the fight. I mean, that's pretty much it for this fight. Like, it just repeats like this. This is a very simple fight. It's the main mechanics of the fight is the DPS check. You really just gotta beat it and hope your damage isn't shit. And, I mean, by the time you get towards the end of the fight and you have, like, 15 seconds left or whatever, you're going to hit a point where you are reaching the next set, uh, or where you first left your puddles. And at that point, you just kind of have to start bringing him into the middle. He should be enraging somewhere soon after that. And you really just got to hope for a kill. Use immunities if you have them, because his charge during enrage does suck. As you see there, his ad got a fear off, and all the melee just got feared off. And <laughs> it almost caused the wipe, because he does enrage here. So, yep. Yeah. That's pretty much it for Ursok. Um, I have more guides out for the rest of the bosses. And if, yeah, if you have a question, go ahead and leave a comment. Uh, subscribe, like, and uh, other than that, have a good day.